Thank you for joining us at Bill 2022. My name is James Skay, and I'm a senior product manager in the Teams Engineering Group. And today, I'd like to walk you through the steps required in order to monetize your Teams app. We'll first start off with what is a monetized Teams app and how they're be found for purchase. We'll then next jump into the five steps needed in order for you to monetize your app. We'll next talk about the validation guidance that you might need in order to consider before submitting your app for validation. And then last but not least, I'm going to leave you with some resources to help you get started to build your monetized Teams app. Let's dive in. First, let's start off by talking about what is a monetized Teams app. Well, it's essentially a Teams app plus a transactable SaaS software that is created in Partner Center. Prior to us releasing our general availability of Teams app monetization, apps can be purchased in AppSource. But we're excited to bring the capability and discoverability of Teams apps for transactions into the Teams App Store as well as into the Teams Admin Center. Let's see how these actually show up. So you might be familiar with the Teams App Store. Find Discover apps, you can choose to add them to your team, channel, or even to a chat. Well, now you're going to discover that there is a buy a subscription capability available within the App Store for those apps that are available for transaction. These apps can be purchased through the Teams App Store via credit card purchase. Next, we can look at the Teams Admin Center. Here, Teams tenant administrators are able to discover apps available for purchase, installation, can choose to buy a subscription and deploy it across their, their tenant. What's different about the Teams Admin Center, however, is that not only can you use a credit card for purchase, but you can also do invoice billing. This allows Microsoft to transact business on behalf of the partner, such that the customer is able to pay via invoice or a purchase order directly to Microsoft. Now, let's talk about a few scenarios to ponder if you're considering, is building a monetized Teams app right for you? Now, we're seeing a lot of interest in multiple scenarios, and a few that we've called out here are productivity, process improvement, or line of business applications, collaboration tools, as well as learning. Now, one of the most common threads about all of these applications is that they provide a level of enhanced value or stickiness to end users. Now, there's a lot of apps in the Teams App Store, and the ones that we find that users are willing to pay for are the ones that provide extra value to them, help them get done with tasks throughout their day, help them become more productive, or even help them find information across uh, their tenant. These are just some of the things to ponder as you are considering whether or not building a Teams app is right for you. Last year, we were excited to share that we reduced our agency fee, the fee that we charge you to transact business on your behalf, from 20% to a flat 3%. Now, this investment allows you to unlock our customer base, from the largest enterprises to our smallest, small and medium-sized businesses, and keep more of your margin while scaling globally in an instant. Now, let's talk about how you can monetize your Teams app. We've distilled this down into five steps. Now, as I mentioned before, we've built a downloadable technical guide meant to walk you through the steps needed to monetize your Teams app. I'm going to walk you through these steps in this session, but I highly encourage you to download that guide as, it will, as you begin your journey. The technical guide has a greater depth than what I will cover here, including some additional best practices, frequently asked questions, and most importantly, clickable links that will take you to the source of additional resources, including the links that you will see included on the resources within these slides. Now, the first step, as I mentioned, is beginning with an existing Teams app. If you haven't already built a Teams app, you will wanna first start here. The guides provide some great links and resources to help you get started. Now, now that you have your Teams app, the next step will be to build the landing page and webhooks that will integrate with our commerce APIs. Think of these as the conduit that will facilitate transactions between our commerce systems and your application. The landing page is where subscribers will be sent post-purchase to configure their subscriptions and assign licenses. Webhook is a service meant to keep subscription status updated, both on your systems as well as ours. It's important to make sure that these are configured correctly and have high service uptime. Should a user's credit card expire or a subscriber purchase additional licenses, as an example, this information will be relayed programmatically through these hooks. Let's take a look at an example of a flow with a webhook and a landing page. In this example, a user completes their purchase through Teams and is then presented with a configure button. Upon click, they're redirected to your landing page in a separate window. We pass a token in that URL that your landing page receives and then makes an API call that retrieves the details of the subscription from that token. You then provision any services required on your side and then send an acknowledgement back to the commerce system that the subscription is active. 
Now, should any additional changes be required for the subscription, these changes are passed back to you through the webhook from our commerce APIs. Now, one thing we often get asked here is, is single sign-on required? And the answer is yes. It is a requirement that your app is using Azure Active Directory uh, on both your landing page as well as within your Teams app itself. Now, let's take a look at a best practice. And as I mentioned, the technical guide has some best practices kind of spread throughout, but I want to cover one right here. Now, let's see this in action. Users purchase their license, they click on Configure Now, and they land on your landing page. Here, there's a few options that can be included in such an, ex an example of a landing page. The ability to assign licenses, take a product tour, or contact support. Let's drill into what it looks like in order to assign a license. Now, there's a few things to keep in mind. As a subscriber, I'm choosing to buy licenses either for myself or on behalf of users within my organization. Now, once I've assigned users to that to my, my organization, they need to know that there's actually a subscription purchased on their behalf. So in this landing page example, the user has gone through the subscriber in this example is selecting the users that they want to assign the license. Now, if there is a need to define a role, for example, a manager or a moderator, you can define that here. And as I mentioned, the notification around uh, a license available is presented here where the option is for either to send an email or an automated Teams chat message to the user that just received a license. As a best practice, you want users who have a license to know that they can get started and how to do so. It'll be up to you to provide that creative angle within your application. Now, once you have your landing page and your webhooks created, we need to move on to create a, a transactable SaaS offer in Partner Center. Now, this is where you define the offer details for your particular transaction. This includes things like descriptions, icons, pricing, as well as the details where you've actually stored your webhook and landing page. Now, no, in order to continue at this stage, you need to have a partner center account to do so. And if you don't, the technical guide actually has links for you to create your very own. Now, starting in Partner Center, we're going to create a new software as a service offer. Here, you're going to provide a free form offer ID, something that will serve as a unique identifier to use in the next additional step. So make sure you remember it. And then also an offer alias, and then you select Create. Next, you're going to select your offer alias that you just created and click Configure. Now, on the offer setup screen, you'll want to ensure that you specify the offer details that you want, that you want to sell through Microsoft and have Microsoft host transactions on your behalf. This step here is actually what enables the transactions to flow through our commerce systems. And on the next screen, you're able to help improve your app discovery in the marketplace, specifically by providing categories, industries, and verticals most appropriate for your app. Offer listing is where you'll add user-facing copy and other collateral to identify your app, such as a description, your logo, and icons. You can also improve your app discovery in the marketplace by providing search keywords here as well. Now, next, we want to define your preview audience. Now, this is an important step. This is where you enter the respective users that will have access to be able to test and validate your offer before it goes live. Now, in an example where you were to try to sideload your Teams app to test the checkout experience, it would only work for those users who were defined in this step. So please make sure to pay extra careful attention to defining your preview audience. Now, remember that landing page of webhook that you created? This is where you'll provide those URLs. You also need to enter the Azure Active Directory tenant ID as well as your application ID here. Now, next, let's get into the details of your plan within your offer. Now, while you're only limited to one offer per app, you can create as many plans, or as I like to call them, SKUs for your offers you like. For example, you might have a basic premium and enterprise plan with different features and pricing. To get started, click on Create New Plan. Now, we're getting into the crux of your plans, pricing and availability. Now, Microsoft transacts business across the globe, and it's up to you to define where the markets are that your app can be purchased. Now, one thing to keep in mind when choosing the markets is that for most markets, Microsoft collects and remits tax on your behalf. However, if you choose to transact in other countries, you may be responsible for the remittance. Now, next, let's define the pricing model. Note that purchases made through Teams apps and Teams Admin Center currently only support a per-user pricing. Now, if your app's looking to only support flat rate pricing, that is fine. There's additional uh, steps needed that I'll talk about in just a minute. But in this example, let's move forward with a per user purchase. Now, here you can define the min and max number of users uh, per plan. 
Now, this might be an example where you have uh, tiered pricing approaches where like for the first 50 licenses, it's X and for like 51 to 100, it's X minus 10%. It's really up to you to define. Now, you can also define your billing terms, whether it's monthly or annual. Now, you can also choose to have the currency entered, in this case, US dollars, be uh, converted to local currencies across the globe, where you're also able to download a spreadsheet where you can enter the currency and the actual uh, dollar amount to be charged in those countries as well. Now, last but not least, you can also consider offering a free 30-day trial to your users. Now, this might be important for users who are on the fence or unfamiliar with your app. Allowing them to experience a free 30-day trial means that they go through the purchase process, enter their credit card information, and they're able to use your app for the first 30 days with no charge. Now, if they don't take any action, meaning they haven't canceled their subscription, on day 31, they'll be billed and their subscription will continue. Now, it's important to call out that you'll need to repeat these steps for each of the plans that you create. Now, moving on, as I mentioned, if you have a Teams app that has flat rate pricing model, please proceed to publish. Users can still find your app uh, via the Teams app store, but they'll need to purchase those app subscriptions directly through App Source. Now, here's where you have the opportunity of providing in-app messaging that would alert users that it, a purchase is required and that you can provide a link for them to go straight into App Source. Now, please be sure to check the technical guide for the additional steps necessary as well as a few reminders around our uh, app policies for mobile experiences, specifically providing links to additional marketplaces. Now that we've defined our plans, it's time to publish. And by here, we're gonna publish the offer to the public marketplace. Now, at this point, you've published your transactable offer in Partner Center. However, there are a few additional steps that need to be done to link your transactable offer with your Teams app. Now let's move on to the most important areas I mentioned, linkage. This is where you're gonna link your transactable SaaS offer to your Teams app. And this happens in two places. First, we're gonna link in the Teams developer portal. And then finally, we're gonna link via partner center. Now, if, you're, if you have a flat rate offer, please make sure that you look through the technical guide for details because you're only gonna to wanna to complete one of these two steps. Now, starting in the Teams developer portal, locate your app and open its configuration. Under plans and pricing, you'll want to enter your publisher ID and offer ID from Partner Center. Now, if you don't remember where those are located, your publisher offer can be found in the legal info section of Partner Center, and your offer ID can be found in the overview section. Now, next, click on preview to verify that the correct offer details are loaded from Partner Center. This step updates your app manifest with the provided information. Now, if, you, if your plan does not load in the Teams developer portal, Validate to make sure that you have a per user selected model in Partner Center and not flat rate, because here's where it will fail. Next, save a copy of your app package with the updated app manifest to your local system. And then we're going to upload that into Partner Center for validation in a few steps. Now, let's head back to Partner Center to link your transactable offer with your Teams app. This step essentially merges your transactable SaaS offer and your Teams app together in App Source. At Offer Setup in Partner Center, select Yes, I have a published Teams app, Office add-in, or SharePoint framework solution that I would like to link to a SaaS offer. Here you're going to insert the link of your Teams app that can be found on AppSource. If you don't have it or you don't know it, you can easily discover it by loading up AppSource through the web and doing a search for your app. Copy that URL into the section here and then click on Review and Publish. Finally, we come to our last step, publishing our Teams app for validation. Now, if you have published a Teams app in the store, then you're already familiar with this process. Now in Partner Center, load up your Teams app and upload the revised app package in the system. But before you submit, consider any additional steps or additional information that validation team should know when testing your application. This may be slightly different than when you first published your app in that there might be information that they need in order to set up payments or uh, what might look different from a free version versus a paid version. Uh, feel free to include extra links to additional documentation or even a walkthrough video uh, or need to know uh, information inside the notes for certification section. But when you're ready to click publish, go for it. But before you do, consider the following validation guidance. I like to first start off by reminding everyone of an important call out regarding purchase experiences on mobile. Please make sure that you're paying special attention to this section if your Teams app links to AppSource or any other page that may require a payment. 
If this is the case, please make sure that you're able to differentiate the experience from a mobile experience versus a desktop or web. That's super important. Let's review some of the most common reasons for validation failures. Now, please be sure to read the store policy guidelines and requirements before publishing. These lay out the exact steps that you'll need to take and areas for caution that you should consider before submitting. Now, remember that the Teams App Store and Teams Admin Center only show Teams apps that show per user pricing. So if you have a flat rate pricing offer and you've linked your publisher and offer ID through Teams Developer Portal, it will automatically fail validation. So please keep that in mind. Now, also double check that the developer name of the application matches that of the transactable SaaS offer. Now, this can be especially tricky when it comes to companies in different geographies or through parent companies. It's important that those names match. And then finally, if there's anything uncommon or unnatural about your application that needs to be considered when testing or validating it, please make sure that that's provided. Otherwise, the team will be reaching out to you for additional information. Partners in need of support should always begin by submitting a support ticket first with Partner Center Support at aka.ms slash Partner Center Support. There, they're able to route your issue or question to the appropriate subject matter expert and get back to you as quickly as possible. Now, there's also some additional details on support that can be found in the downloadable technical guide that I'll get to in just a moment. Speaking of technical guide, let's talk about the resources available to help you get started. Now, the first place you should begin is with our downloadable technical guide. This PDF is full of materials and references to help you monetize your app, including best practices, as I mentioned, frequently asked questions, and links to important documents. Oh, and a favorite of developers is the included quick reference guide. You can kind of see here on the screen. Download this today at aka.ms slash tmtg. There's also a webinar based on the technical guide, kind of similar to this session, but a little bit more uh, informed where you can sign up and watch today at aka.ms slash tmtw. And then finally, we've also created some code samples to help you get started. And those can be found on GitHub. There you're gonna find an introductory video, a mock app source website, a license management component, and some lightweight apps. It's really helped to accelerate your development for Teams apps. You can find those code samples at aka.ms slash tmcs. And finally, here are a few additional resources for you to consider. If you haven't already signed up as a Modern Work ISV, you should do it today. This program provides you with a host of benefits to become more successful as an ISV. Uh, whether that includes access to Microsoft technology, Azure benefits, there's a myriad of stuff out there for you to take advantage of and do so today. You can sign up at aka.ms slash modernworkisv. And finally, if you're on the fence and like to see how other partners are doing in this space, please take a look at our partner success stories. You can find them at aka.ms slash TMSS. And speaking of success, I hope to soon see your application in our Teams App Store transacting with subscriptions. I'd like to thank you for joining us today at Build, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.